Chrysler. So it turns out that um, these Fiat Chrysler vehicles uh, were, had a radio, a head unit in them that was connected to the internet. And this feature was there so it can do things like get traffic updates, you can remotely start your car with an app and that sort of thing. But what that also meant was it was a you know, point of exposure. So uh, my buddy Chris Valsak and I were able to remotely uh, scan to find vulnerable vehicles and uh, for our, our car, uh, we found a vulnerability that allowed us to remotely get code running on this head unit. And then we could, by doing some other trickery that I discussed, uh, we could actually send messages to all the components in the car. So that includes things like the steering, the brakes, um, and we could make them do some action. So we could turn on the windshield wipers, we could lock the car, unlock the car, we could um, make the brakes not work at low speed. So it's pretty scary that you can go from, you know, finding a car in the middle of you know, Texas and, you know, change the radio station or, or uh, you know, affect the steering. And so it was really scary vulnerability. Um, we worked with Fiat Chrysler to get it fixed and uh, they did a recall of all the vulnerable vehicles. They changed the way that the cellular communications work. So even if there were more vulnerabilities, you can no longer talk to the, to the vehicles, you know, remotely. So, uh, you know, we're pretty happy that the way it turned out that, that now all these cars, not only are they fixed from this particular vulnerability we found, but there's no way that we know to remotely attack uh, them from a distance at least. And this is something, you were talking about cars, if we want to change in security, it has to start about five years out. Right, so the way, you know, it's, that's a big difference between cars and say a web browser is if Google decides they want to patch Chrome tomorrow, they just do that. Um, it's no big deal, but with a car, you know, patching is hard because most cars you can't patch remotely over the air. You have to bring them into the dealer and, and that's not easy. Uh, and a lot of people don't ever do that. Um, but as far as new cars come, the, the way that you know, the car manufacturing industry works is they're designing cars now for, for four years out. So the cars that are gonna come out in 2017, those things were designed a long time ago. They're already you know, being built, you know, the parts are being purchased. And uh, so there's, the, the change in the auto industry is really slow. And uh, that's another barrier to you know, having secure systems there. So anybody that didn't take their car back to the dealership for that particular recall, they're still vulnerable to? Um, they, I mean, technically the vulnerability is there, but they can't be attacked because they, they changed not only, they, they changed the way that the, the, the Sprint, which was the cellular carrier that, that, that the, the cars communicate with, they changed the rules of the, the network communication. So um, before, I could actually reach out and, and you know talk to the, the various cars, but they, they stopped that. So now, even if you never got your car, you never took it in to get it updated, um, you can. I still can't talk to your car, so I can't I can't um, exploit it. Even though it might be vulnerable, it, it's not exploitable anymore. So uh, you're safe. And what with um, you know IoT, there's new connected devices every day. Then there's security problems found the next day. What do you do you think with you know, your coffee maker could be connected to your car. Is this you know, something security they have to get right before it's too late? Well, uh, Internet of Things security is, is an issue, and, and cars are just an example of that. So uh, they went through the same history where, you know, cars were, were a thing that weren't connected for a while, and so they were built that way. Um, and so security wasn't important. But as soon as you start putting it on the Internet, then of course it becomes important, and you've got this old code that was written a long time ago, and everything's trusted, and, and it, it just becomes a problem. And this is the same thing with, you know, toasters and stuff. But, um, you know, like for us, we focus on cars because, uh, you know, if you exploit my refrigerator or my toaster, I don't really care. But if you exploit my car, then I'm, I'm pretty worried. So um, I think it's just, you know, cars are an example, like sort of the worst example of Internet of Things. And just um, for you personally, what has your life, when you hacked into your Jeep, or did you think it would get this big of a response? It's hard to tell. Like, it seemed to me like it was a pretty big deal, but, uh, you know, you never know what people are going to be interested in. So, like, I've done other research in the past that I thought was, like, really awesome, and sometimes people don't think it's so cool. So I was happy that... Uh, you know, for, for me, it's, it's, not, it's not really about what people like think about me or whatever. It's like, I just want to affect change and uh, we did that here. So we, you know, we got a recall. Um, so, so those cars got fixed. I mean, that was a big concern, right? Like, here's this vulnerability. Like, what are they going to do? Um, you know, we're, we're going to talk about it no matter what. Like, we want to get the information out there so that everyone can learn, not just, you know, Fiat Chrysler. But um, 
so the way it turned out where they fixed it and, and they did a really good job of, of not just fixing that one vulnerability but locking locking it down for so no one can attack them anymore. Like we're really happy that like all these cars are safe now. Like I still drive my Jeep and I don't worry about it. So it's it's I'm I'm I couldn't be happier with how it all turned out.